We're talking to Ed about a big occasion here at the, the music store. What's going on? Uh, we're, we're hosting uh, Jim here uh -huh. with Lee Oscar for a, a big night tonight. Uh -huh. And how often do you do this? Um, we're, we're trying to feature instruments for a month at a time, a few times a year. Uh -huh. And this month it was harmonica. Wow. So do you have a website? We do, bellingandwindworks.com. Well, thank you, Ed. You bet. There's four weeks of classes, and um, different people are going to do different things, but I kind of want to do a history and, and, and stuff about the harmonica. So it all started in about 1828, something like that. Christian Bushman took the theory of a free-swinging reed, which is a reed that swings freely to get its tone, um, like a shing, you know, not like a piece of grass where you're putting your fingers in both sets of fixed reed but a free swinging reed and um, put two precisely tuned lead brass reeds on a lead reed plate and created the first modern day harmonica. It was a, it was a lead reed plate from the Civil War battlefield that somebody dug up. So anyway, um, um, so anyway, they created the first harmonica. And in 1856, Mathis Honer and his wife started making harmonicas. It's the first year they made like 250, now they make more than a thousand an hour. You know, and um, well, that, that was in the heyday. Now, I think they've slowed down now, but you know, they make them, they're, they're mass produced. And um, what was the name of the company? Mathis Honer. Honer? Oh, Honer. Honer Harmonic Company. Um, I, um, I was endorsed by Honer for oh, 35 years or so. and. Um, and I was playing harmonicas by a custom harmonica builder named Joe Felisco, and I was working for Lee Oscar. <laughs> so I'm endorsed by Horner, working for Lee Oscar, playing Felisco harmonicas. <laughs> anyway, um, but I play Lee Oscars now, and I work for Lee still, and um, I'll be talking about his different tunings and stuff. Uh, Mathis Horner and his wife started making harmonicas, and it was quite the rage. So they basically came up with, uh, excuse me, this is a standard 10-hole diatonic. Diatonic means major scale. And the only place uh, the major scale is on this is between 4 and 7. So it's the major scale down is joy of the world. So anyway, that's the only place the major scale is. And um, there it is. It is Okay, so this, I'm going to talk about this harmonica first, because this is the one I'm using. And this is if you buy a 10-hole Marine Band, Golden Melody, Special 20, Lee Oscar, Herring, Wong, whatever. This is the tuning that they are. And the reason they're set up this is so if you blow, basically, okay, the harmonica is like a capo on a guitar. So you play, a guitar player plays in the key of G, puts a capo on one fret up, he's in G sharp or F, you know, or, or A flat. Two, two frets up, he's in A. So basically, the harmonica is like a capo. If you learn to play one thing on one harmonica in this type of tuning, all you have to do is change harmonicas and play the same way, and you're in another key. So this one is in the key of C. So it's designed to basically play the C chord all the way up. Okay, then they set it up this way so it doubles here. And the reason is they can play a C chord and then a G chord. And that's, they designed it to play oompa music, basically. You know, that kind of stuff. That's how it's designed. And that's why it, you get that, that chord there. So it's basically originally designed to play that way. The way I play is called purse lips. It's basically where you put your lips over the harmonica, not the harmonica on near your lips, but you put your lips around the harmonica and you square your lips off inside and play through your lips. I'll come around and show you how that's done in a second. The other way is you can curl your tongue like Norton Buffalo played, put your tongue at the bottom of the hole you want to play through and play through your tongue. Or you can play the old timey style, yeah, where you lay your tongue sideways on the harmonica like this and you lift your tongue up and down to get the chords. That kind of stuff. And most Chicago blues players play with the tongue blocking method. That they get that way they get that. You know, they get that kind of percussive sound. And uh, a little bit deeper 
uh, tone because you're opening, you have to open up your throat to play it. But the way I play this personally, mostly, and that's where you put your lips around the harmonic lip. And if you look at my lips, I'll walk around here and get my face out of the way. You can see how my lips square off inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know the square? They actually square off. Anyway, that's the way I play. Uh, I do put my tongue the, on the, the reeds on the hole sometimes if I'm playing like jigs and stuff like that. Because um, it helps me keep focused. But anyway, so that's the way I play. So anyway, but it was designed to play the the old the, the way where you, the way I learned to do tongue blocking is I put a pencil in my mouth like this, and I put my tongue out, out that way, and got like a blow out of the side of my mouth. That's how I learned that. But the old timey style, how these were originally set up, other than Upa, was like I'll play a Oh, Susanna. You hear how the tongue comes up and down, you hear that sound? <coughs> That's the original, like, how it was originally designed to play these things, that old timey style. So that's basically what makes a difference in a harmonica. But if you can learn one thing on one harmonica, all you have to do is change harmonicas to change key. That's the cool thing about it. The other thing cool thing about the harmonica, it's one of the easiest instruments in the world to play because it's, it's basically in tune here. And you got a... So if you want to do like a train, which is really one of the things I teach kids. Who's doing, somebody's doing a workshop. Are you teaching kids? Okay, well, this is what I teach all the kids. If you inhale and say like, took a... And you exhale and say hoodoo, you know, so hoodoo, hoodoo. On draw one, two, three, and four, you get a train. And then if you inhale on a three, four, and five, and go wow, 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 you get the whistle. There's a train, it's so easy. Took a hoodoo, took a hoodoo, wow, wow, on three, four, five. You don't even have to play singing notes. It's really easy, you know? So you can get stuff like that. And then uh, I do a little train story. Is there a coffee cup around here, a mug? Sure, I can, yeah. Uh, so um, anyway, I'll, I'll do this brief little thing that I do for the sound effects. And a lot of these things are really easy. Oh, perfect. Thank you. So um, um, so if you go like second grade kissing, you know, like that, and on, on two and then go up to four, you can get a chicken. There's a chicken. That's really easy. Let's draw two and then go up and draw four. Um, you can draw really hard on one and two and get a car horn. Um, three, four, five and get a horse train with it. Um, blow ten, draw one and get a donkey. You get a donkey. Um, sometimes I throw them. You like ruffles and ruffles and ribs. My throat's not cooperating tonight. You get a cat brain. Come on, throat. I've been having trouble with my throat lately. There it is. Like a cat purr. So, and then if you go, if you were doing a train thing, and you put a cup up to it, you got like you're, you're in a tunnel. If you're playing, if you're like playing um, music, it's like you, you get a uh, you get a hand vibrato. And what I'm doing is I'm putting my like this thumb and this finger together like this. You know, so that's how you get a hand vibrato. You go. So if I want to do like um, and I do I go in my throat for a throat vibrato. I go la 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 for a different vibrato. I do my job and down for another vibrato. Um, I use my diaphragm for a stop vibrato. So uh, this is a traditional vibrato where the tongue fluctuates. And here's a stop vibrato where it just goes stop, 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 stop. Hear the difference? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm playing like 
Danny Boy. Same thing as you go like dit don wow on your read, you know. It's the same note, I'm just changing the shape of my mouth and the color of the note. So if I want it to sound, you know, I mean I can play the same thing, but I can do it, you know, um, you know, so I can I can color the note however I want, change the color of the note. I'm not playing anything different, I'm just changing, I'm using my body as a, as a resonating chamber and the way I rather take the note into my mouth and the way I shape my mouth to change these sounds. I'm not doing anything different. Like I'll, um, I do a thing, my, my playing is based on, I don't want to get too much into theory here, the pentatonic scale, which is basically Do, Re, Mi, Sol, La. Those six notes of the, of the do, re, mi, do, Re, Mi, Sol, La. And I will only play those notes on this harmonica. And this is what it sounds like. The first so that's it. So everybody can put it all together. The basis of my playing. I mean, a lot of people are rooted in the blues and stuff. I mean, I do a lot of other stuff besides that. But if you listen to me play, that's you will hear that all the time in my playing because that's my the basis of my playing. The way I feel when I play, and rather than the blues scale is. Sorry, I screwed up. some of the things the harmonica can do. And the different tunings and why, you know, why, you know, why I use them and why they are. Now I want to talk about the different kinds of harmonica. But then I'm going to walk over here. So, now, you guys have looked at my harmonica collection, right?
This is a tremolo harmonica, or echo harmonica. Basically, it's six different keys. It just looks fancy. Well, uh, get the right way. Basically, what it is, is a two-reeded instrument. So it's two reeds are played at the same time. They're slightly out of tune to each other. Let me look at our harmonica. They're slightly out of tune to each other, so it gives you that tremolo, that echoey effect. And so it gives you that, I don't know which one of these is C, of course they're not smart enough to put that on for dumb people like me. Oh, there it is, it is, I lied, I'm okay. I'm trying to see. That's the E, what is this? Ah, C, okay. So. But I can do that with this. Not quite as nice as this, but I can do that effect. Uh, so, so anyway, that's a, this is a tremolo. A lot of these in here are tremolos. But it's four counts. <coughs> so you can hear how it's slightly out of tune. The Red River Valley kind of stuff. So that's what these are. Basically, you know, I have this collection because I like them. You know, you know, different ones. Okay, this one here is the same thing. But this, if you ever have the Paul Butterfield Better Days album, that's the album, the, song, the, the harmonica that's on the album. It's the same thing, it just looks fancier. You know, it was, it, they did is it, mostly all this stuff is for sales. You know, they want to sell you stuff. Um, this one here is called the Moophone. This is probably one of my rarer harmonicas. This was made for the New Zealand market, and uh, hence the Moophone. And New Zealand is a small country, but this is octave tuned. So instead of being slightly out of tremolo tuned like this, it's slightly out of tune to each other. This is tuned. an octave apart. So, and then this is just So that's basically, it's octave tune though, so it has a different sound than that. Consistent. They work well. They always play good. I mean, I work for Lee, and we get maybe, maybe, maybe a dozen harmonicas. Maybe, probably not that many a year back for repair. You know, maybe. You know, as our, you know, I haven't done any repair work for three months for them. You know, so that's how good our quality control is. And, uh, and I'm not saying that. Look, I'm not trying to sell you Lee Oscars. I'm just telling you. When I was endorsed by Homer traveling the world, I would tell people. Same thing I'm telling you right now. Out of the box, you couldn't buy a better harmonica. Why didn't I play them? Well, I didn't play them because I like the feel of the golden melodies. The other thing is, Lee Oscar Reeves, Lee Oscar Reeves are um, longer and narrower, and Honers are shorter and wider. So with the Honer, you can do that technique that I do. Um, where's my C harmonica? I know we're going around here 
somewhere. C, where are you at? C, oh, there you go. So, and that technique is called overblowing, where you blow and raise the pitch up. Well, you can do that, raise the pitch. It, it, um, it's called overblowing. And with the honers, it's a lot easier to do. With the Lee Oscar, it's a little more sensitive because of the shape of the reed. Because it's longer, it can do this in the, re in the reed slot easier. So you have to be able to play the overblows with better armature and better control. So actually, by doing them on this, I'm a better player than doing them on the honer. And, on, and uh, most people play honers uh, because it's been the industry standard for years. Um, also, these are a little bit brighter than the Marine Band, and as far as tone wise, they're a little brighter. Um, some people don't like that. Some people like that dirtier, nastier sound. Me, it doesn't matter because I change the way this note sounds by opening my throat and closing my throat and changing my embouchure, so I can adjust my tone that way. And I, I uh, and the other thing too is the Marine Band. The, Crossover, all those, they're temper tuned. These are just tuned. Although we're just starting to slightly temper tune. The difference is, if you watch a guitar player and he has a chromatic tuner and he tunes his guitar to a chromatic tuner, then he strums his guitar and he adjusts it. Okay, when he tunes it to a chromatic tuner and he strums it, that's a Lee Oscar, that's a golden note. When he adjusts the, the tunes it, that's a marine band, that's a crossover. So they're tuned to the chords. These are tuned to the melody. I prefer playing melodies. I'm not a chord player. I mean, I do play chords, but they're melodically tuned. And so is the golden melody, hence golden melody. They're just tuned instead of temper tuned. I prefer just tuning. You know, uh, you, but the blues guys want the, more of the temper tuning because they give you that big fat <coughs> blues chord and all that stuff. But I'm not a blues player. I'm a harmonica player. You know, I play blues changes, I can play that stuff, but I'm not a blues player. You know, I don't want to be a blues player. I mean, I don't want to be a blues player. I'm not going to be a blues player. It's not my thing. I mean, there's some great players out there. Mark Hummel, uh, Rick Estrin, uh, Charlie Musselwhite, you know, all those guys are, you know, great blues players. <laughs>
Dufresne, who's going to be here one of the weeks, he's a killer chromatic player. Yes, sir. And he's really a good chromatic player. So if you want to hear more about the chromatic, talk to him because he's he can get the things that I, I just never could get the feel for. He's got the feel. I mean, he's a really good chromatic player. And um, he's not like Toots Tilsman, Larry Adder, or Stevie Wonder, but he's more of a, in the blues type of vein, but he's a really good chromatic player.